So in today's video, we are going to talk about the central nervous system, which is also called the CNS. So the central nervous system, the CNS, is the body's command center. It is responsible for receiving, integrating, and processing information. It generates neural impulses that controls bodily functions. So the CNS is composed of two primary organs, the brain and the spinal cord. The brain includes the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the brainstem, and the subcortical structures. So we are going to go through this. And then the spinal cord extends from the brainstem and runs through the vertebral canal. Both the brain and the spinal cord are protected by three layers of meninges and they are encased in the skull and the vertebral column respectively. So the CNS communicates with the peripheral nervous system which is the PNS through the cranial and the spinal nerves. The brain gives off 12 pairs of cranial nerves that control the neck, the head and certain organs while the spinal cord gives off 31 pairs of spinal nerves that control the rest of the body. So here are key facts. The function of the CNS is to supremely command the center of the body responsible for processing and generating neural impulses. So let's move over to the main components of the CNS. So number one, we have the gray and the white matter. You know, the neurons, which are the main cells of the CNS, they have a gray colored body and myelinated axons that appear to be white. So based on this, the CNS can be said to be divided into two, which is the gray and the white matter. So the white matter contains clusters of neuron cell bodies and it is responsible for processing information. So in the brain, it forms the cerebral cortex and the neural nuclei, while in the spinal cord, it forms the inner butterfly-like structure. Now the white matter is composed of the melanated axons which forms the pathway that transmits information. In the brain, it is located beneath the gray matter while in the spinal cord, it surrounds the gray matter. So number two of the components of the CNS is the cortex and the brain loops. So the cerebrum, which is the largest part of the brain, is divided into two hemispheres which are connected by the corpus callosum. Now it has numerous folds which, which are called the gyri and it has grooves which are called the sulci and it increases its surface area and helps in the processing power. So each hemisphere are divided into five loops. Number one is the frontal loop which controls the movement, reasoning and problem solving skills and also speech. Then number two is the parietal loop. The parietal loop processes sensory information such as touch, pain and temperature. Why the temporal loop? It involves the hearing, memory, and language comprehension. Then the occipital loop, which is responsible for vision. So it's partially the reason you are seeing this video right now. And then number five is the insular loop, which is associated with emotions and self-awareness. So let's move over to the third one, which is the subcortical structures. So these structures lie deep within the brain and they include the diencephalon which comprises of the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the subthalamus and the epithalamus. Now, they regulate sensory processing and motor control and also they regulate hormone functions. Another one is the basal ganglia, which are a group of nuclei that controls the movement and coordination. Then the limbic system which includes the hippocampus and other structures responsible for emotions, memory and motivation. So number four is the brain stem. The brain stem connects the brain to the spinal cord and regulates essential functions such as breathing, heart rate and digestion. So it includes the midbrain which controls visual and auditory reflexes, the pawns which are involved in sleep, hearing, balance and facial movements, and then the mendula oblongata which regulates vital functions like breathing and blood pressure. So this is actually an exam question. Which part of the brain controls the blood pressure? So you can go for mendula oblongata. Then number five is the cerebellum. The cerebellum is located at the back of the brain and it coordinates balance, posture and fine motor movement. It's divided into three loops and connects to the brain stem via the cerebellar pendicles. 
So number six is the spinal cord. The spinal cord extends from the brain stem down to the L1 or L2 vertebrae and it is divided into five segments, the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral and coccygeal. So it transmits signal from the brain and the body and also helps in controlling reflex actions. So number, number seven is the meninges. We talked about this earlier. It is actually a protective layer. So, so it has three protective layers that surround the CNS. Number one is the dura mater, which is the outermost and the toughest layer. Then the arachnoid layer, which is the middle layer containing cerebrospinal fluid, the C. SF and the pia mater, which are the innermost layer, which closely adheres to the brain and the spinal cord. Then number eight is the brain ventricles and the cerebrospinal fluid, which is the CSF. So the CSF is actually a clear fluid that cushions the brain and the spinal cord. It supplies nutrients and also helps in removing waste. So it circulates through the four brain ventricles, the two lateral ventricles, the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle. So the CSF is produced by the choroid plexus and it flows through specialized openings like the foramani to reach the subarachnoid space where it is eventually absorbed into the venous system. Then number nine is the neural pathway and spinal cord tract. So the neural pathways connect different parts of the CNS and they are classified into two. The ascending, which is the sensory tract and the descending, which is the motor tract. So the ascending, just as its name says, it carries information from the body to the brain and the descending, which is also called the motor tract, transmits motor commands from the brain to the body. So. Let's talk about common disorders found in CNS. <laughs> so number one is the well-known stroke. It is actually caused when a disruption or blockage happens to blood flow to a particular part of the brain, leading to brain damage. Then number two is Parkinson's disease, which is actually a disorder affecting movements due to lack of dopamine. Now, there are other CNS disorders and this video is actually getting longer, so maybe you have to read that up.